A scientist by training, but as the deputy mayor for uh, public engagement for the city of Philadelphia, and then resigned that job to run for office. Um, Lieutenant Governor for the state of Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And at the moment, I am um, post-election, I came in second in a field of five. I got 184,429 votes, and I did that in 11 weeks. I'm very proud, even though it wasn't uh, what I, the result I wanted. But I was very proud that I was able to win 16 counties in Pennsylvania. Continuing with the platform that I spoke about, which is really about opportunity. It is about access. It is about making sure that we don't let um, one of our biggest issues in the country, which I think is racism, stand in the way of people achieving their dreams and living their very best lives. Um, and I'm looking to see how you dismantle those uh, structural problems, whether it be racism or whether it be a, a, the lack of access because you don't belong to a certain economic class. All of these things together are holding people back and I'm very interested to see what are those different institutions and structures standing in the way of What is your stand on our judicial system as it is today? So a lot of problems. It's problematic, you know. We we have uh, a system, a judicial system that is supposed to be based on blind justice, meaning we have the lady with the um, blindfold, means they're not to be seeing anyone to be biased about how justice is meted out. Unfortunately, in real life, that does not occur. There is a lot of implicit and explicit bias within all parts of the judicial system that impacts people and uh, allows does not allow people to get um, due justice. So I'm very concerned about um, that particular branch of our government because that's the one uh, part of government that has very little accountability particularly amongst judges. So we have a Supreme Court where we have, when the president appoints someone, they're there for life. So uh, you know, there's very little recourse for us once they're on that bench, uh, even if they might not have the best uh, values that put them there. Uh, similarly, in our circuit courts and the federal system has those problems. Different states have different types of judicial systems. Uh, we live in a state where we elect our judges and uh, that give us, gives us some recourse. Uh, however, there are 10 year um, you know, terms, so it's a long time with a lot of damage that can be done in that process. There are other parts of the judicial system that also need a lot of reform, whether we're talking about the prosecutors, whether we're talking about making sure there's funding for our public, de uh, public defender association and all the remedies for people to mitigate their financial stat status so it doesn't impact what kind of a judicial outcome they get in courts. So. One of the biggest things, though, outside of all of this, is the corruption. This is a state of Pennsylvania where we sent two Supreme Court judges to jail. It was a case called Kids for Cash, where they were benefiting uh, by sending young juveniles to um, juvenile homes or getting, um, you know, giving them sentences so they could fill the beds because they had a private interest in those institutions that were housing those children. They got long sentences, but it took a long time to get there. Just yesterday, we had the Supreme Court say they would not reveal the names of the 11 um, uh, clergy who are sex sexual abusers. We already know that. And they're being protected again by a judicial system uh, that looking at their interest and not the interest of the victims who have survived these awful crimes. Um, so clearly there is need for reform. We have all kinds of examples every day that really have caused people not to trust our judicial system. And you know, we need to trust our government organizations, our branches of government, particularly the judicial system, because we are known as a country of laws. We operate on um, the structure that gives access to people to uh, find justice, regardless of who they are. Well, that's the that's what we say it is, but that's not in practice. So corruption is a really big problem. The judicial system is 
you like to see in our courts? If these are the issues, how would you like to see those issues addressed? So, you know, there's a big move about how we um, get our judges, whether we're going to elect them or select them. There's a big move for us selecting the judges. Um, while I understand the reasoning behind it, that we want qualified people to serve on the bench, I think it does not take care of the ex internal and external biases that creep into that process and how it can leave out people who are entering you know, the legal system and don't have networks that allow them to be known by people who do this choosing, even though there's a community component. It's a complicated way that's supposed to address all of these issues. However, I think what would be really useful is if we took money out of the judicial elections, meaning we would have a public financing system just for our judges. Since we have trouble doing it for everyone, maybe we can look to do it just for our judges and then have some kind of criteria that screens them to allow them to run. So it's a hybrid of election and selection. And I would love to see uh, some work done on that. But then the the judicial candidate is never beholden to anyone uh, who's you know, giving them uh, resources to be elected. Because that really creates a lot of um, conflict of interest when you have lawyers who are the biggest donors in judicial elections come in front of you and how do you, um, you know, choose to do your you know, due diligence there. There have been case after case that have shown that somebody puts money on and then there's a, um, you know, a verdict given that really benefits that donor. Uh, I don't know that how rampant it is, but even one case is one too many. I would abolish the death penalty. I think that's just wrong. 4%, 4.1% of death penalty cases are taking, you know, putting innocent people to death. That's four out of a hundred people. That's one too many. That is just wrong. We should not be in the business of doing that. We should have a much more robust uh, criminal justice reform system that actually helps whoever committed whatever crime to reform. We, we, we are not doing that. We are not adequately doing that. You know, there are all kinds of issues with our uh, incarceration uh, process and what we do to help people remedy themselves. We're really not creating a restorative justice framework at all. So that's one. Another issue, so it's corrupt judges, election versus selection, uh, death penalty, and never having juveniles, um, you know, judged as adults. That is just another, so wrong, I can't tell you how, as a parent, I just think that it's just the worst thing we can do to children. And again, research has shown when you do that, when a, a person who's um, not an adult is judged as an adult and tried as an adult, uh, they do very poorly. The outcomes of those people are much worse than people who stay in the juvenile justice system, uh, flawed as it is. So that's another thing that I think we need to change. Um, and then there's the controlling of the bias. I think that is so problematic that um, it is invasive in all parts of our life, but when you have it in the judicial system, that can really impact you. You can be uh, found guilty of things and um, when you're completely innocent because of biases that are present in our judicial system. And a novel way to address that would be, and I, there's a professor in Drexel who's kind of proposed that in a Brookings Institution report. Why not have a virtual system of um, a judicial system where you don't actually see who the perpetrator is and, and so you're, you're not biased by your own implicit biases to assess uh, outcomes for those person. So, I mean, those are things to be explored, but th that's an idea I think we should explore much more fully. And then finally, I think how we deal with sexual assault is, in my opinion, criminal. We just don't deal with it. We don't take it seriously. So the rape culture that is so prevalent in our society, actually in the globe, not just locally here in this country, has to be addressed. And the judiciary is the first place where we could do it if we took it seriously. So the whole case about the 
clergy uh, being um, sort of sequestered in a way that no one will ever know who they are, stay in the shadows, and no justice for the people who, um, who were victimized is an example of how we keep perpetrating this. When we look at the sentences for uh, spousal rape, it's not taken seriously at all. There's some states that only have a set sentence of 10 years. Um, and intimate partner violence is one of the highest uh, rates of violence that occur in our society. So we have to take all of these things seriously. And you know, there are many more things, but these are some top of line things for me.